Hello all, welcome back to the new video. In this video, we'll be learning about coroutine exception handling. So I'm pretty much sure that you guys are aware of how to handle exceptions in a normal way, like the traditional way to handle those exceptions. But in coroutines, we generally do not follow the uh, traditional way. We'll check why we don't follow that. And uh, this video will be the last video of our coroutine playlist. So I'll suggest you guys, if you have directly jumped on to this video, Make sure you have watched the earlier videos as well. So you will get to know about this concept in a much better way. So yeah, let's get started. So here we have our main activity. In this, we are basically will be experimenting few things. So do not, so don't pay much attention on the coding standard in this because I just want to clear the concept of exception handling and I'm not writing here the production code here. So don't bother about that if I'm using global scope dot launch and all the stuff, which we generally avoid using in the production code, right? So before heading directly to the exception handling part of coroutine, uh, let me tell you the cancellation concept. So how these coroutine gets canceled and the parent child relationship of this. So let me tell you first that. So I'll be declaring one global scope here. In this global scope, we will create one coroutine and we will name it as parent job. Same way, we will create one more coroutine, which we will name it as child job one. And the same way, we will create one more coroutine and we will name it as child job two. Now, we have these three coroutines, okay? So this is the parent one and these two are child. Now this should ideally be inside the parent like this. Okay. So we have a parent coroutine and the two child coroutines we have. So to track these coroutines, let's add a log statement here. Uh, let's add a child job one because this is inside child job. Okay. Uh, let's create this property as coroutine. Coroutines. Now let's copy this and paste it here. Name it as child job two because we are inside the child job two. Now let's create in this here. I don't think we need it. That's okay. Now this is our parent job till here. Okay. So till now I don't think anyone has any issues in this code because I'm assuming that you have seen the earlier videos as well of this playlist. So okay, let's try to run this code and see what output we get. Okay, let's filter this with coroutines. And here you can see that we are getting child job one, child job one and child job two. Basically these two lines are getting executed. This we can say that our both the child coroutines got executed. Now what I'll do is, this is my parent job. I'll try to cancel this parent job now. Let's cancel it and try to print this log statement again. Let's try to print it, parent job cancelled. Let's try to run it. Okay, now you can see parent job got cancelled, but these two statements are not printed. Let's do one more stuff to get it more clear. Let's add the delay here for one second. And let's add the delay here for four seconds. I'll tell you how, why I'm doing this. And here we are adding it two seconds. Now what my thought process behind doing doing this stuff is, so when we will come here, it will gonna wait for a second. Okay, now it is waiting for a second. Then it will come to this line. Here it will wait for four seconds. Till now, let's suppose, assume this one second got over, this will get printed. So first line is this, child job one. This is still waiting for another three seconds or so. Till now, this thing comes here, it will wait for two seconds and cancel the parent job after two seconds and print this parent job cancelled. So till now what got printed? Child job one and parent job cancelled. This particular thing is not printed yet. Why? Because it is waiting for four seconds. But we have cancelled this whole parent job coroutine itself just after two seconds. So the concept behind here is if any coroutine, if any parent coroutine is getting cancelled, all the child coroutines inside that parent coroutine will automatically get cancelled. So let me show you this. Let's try to run this and check the behavior. So if you'll see here, child job one got printed as we have discussed and parent job cancelled printed. But this child job two 
is not printed why because this got cancelled earlier itself and this was waiting for four seconds so i hope you have cleared the cancellation part between parent and child now one more concept is here it's not necessary that we can only cancel parent job okay i mean parent code green we can also cancel the child jobs we can also cancel child job one child job two the interesting part is whenever any coroutine gets cancelled it throws cancellation exception so let me show you this as well let's clear this parent job cancel one because now we are trying to cancel the child coroutine so this is child job one and let me cancel this here okay and print the log statement child job one got got cancelled okay now let's see what i did uh we are waiting here for one second okay this is waiting for four seconds this will get cancelled immediately and this will get printed because this cancellation part is not waiting for anything and these two things are waiting so they will be delayed for one second and this four second but this thing is not waiting for anything so this thing gets executed immediately and child got cancelled will be printed here what about these two things so if child job one got cancelled immediately then after one second this line will not execute it because child job one is already cancelled right now it will come to child job two child job two will wait for four seconds and it will print child job two because we are not even touching child job two we are just we are just cancelling the child job one part so let's try to run this again and let's see what happens here child job one got cancelled and after four seconds yeah child job two came so i hope you have cleared something in this as well now in this as i said earlier if any coroutine gets cancelled it throws cancellation exception let's see how this works so here we are cancelling this uh, child job one now let's try to handle that exception here using try catch block so i'm writing try catch here and let's move these two lines in the try inside catch let's try to print this itself got cancelled instead of got cancelled we can say got handled now let's try to run this and see if this gets printed yeah child job one got, got handled and after four seconds this got printed as well because we are not doing anything with child job two so this is running parallelly in every case because we are not even touching it okay we have not handled the cancellation one let's try to write it like this cancellation cancellation exception sorry for that okay let's try to run this again okay child job one got handled again so this means that it is handling basically it is catching the cancellation cancellation exception now we have discussed like at the start of the video that try catch is not that much efficient for coroutines right now why let me tell you why so inside this try uh, let me remove all this thing so that it won't be confusing that much uh let's remove this as well we don't need it inside try uh delay we don't need it okay so these are the basic two statements we have okay now inside try what i'll do i'll try to launch one more core ready let's remove this as well we don't need it inside this try we have launched one more core routine here we'll try to throw one exception okay inside exception inside child job one okay now let's handle it here as well so ideally it should get caught in this catch right because we are using try catch and if this someone is throwing exception then it should got caught inside the catch block let's try to run this whoop so this got crashed so this did not got caught inside the catch block why so this is printing as it is whatever the error message we have mentioned here let's check what happened here so now let's understand the concept behind this any child core routine which is throwing the exception will be propagate that exception or transfer that exception to the parent core routine now here this exception this child core routine thrown this uh, exception this got transferred to this got propagated to this parent core routine 
and from here it got propagated to this parent goroutine and from here this got propagated to this parent goroutine and we are not handling it anywhere okay that's the reason why this got failed but now you might ask me that why cancellation exception was working so now let's try to throw the cancellation exception okay now let's see what happens let's try to run it it is not failed because nothing got printed here now what's the difference between ex the normal exception and the cancellation exception the the difference is there are two kind of exceptions okay there is one caught and uncaught so only uncaught exceptions are failing in this scenario so this coroutine feature already handles the cancellation exception so this is handled by coroutine itself we don't need to handle it from our end hence this is called the caught exception that's the reason why this is not throwing the this is not throwing any error in the log cat because this is already handled by coroutines so why they have handled this thing and not the other one because cancellation exception is something which gets thrown while we can while we cancel any coroutine so obviously if someone is cancelling the coroutine they will not uh, you know handle it every time so they have by default handle it from their end so we don't need to handle for the cancellation exception now for for the every other case we need to handle it now you can ask me like how can we even handle it because this try catch is not working properly in this or like how many times we'll use try catch here so this is the main thing here now let's back to the old code this was the old code okay let's try to uh, let me clear this uh, let's remove this try and catch as well now this code seems clean to me so we only have the parent job and two children of that parent so there's one function called as coroutine exception handler here we got this coroutine context this throwable so this throwable indicates that we can handle any kind of exception in this particular lambda function now let's try to print it and write here as exception coroutine coroutine exception handled and we can write our throwable as well now we need to pass this coroutine exception handler now let's make one variable and now we need to pass this coroutine exception handler variable inside the root coroutine now which is your root coroutine because as i told you earlier the any exception which is getting thrown by the child coroutine will be propagated to its parent one so here we are throwing it it will go to here then it will go to here and then it will go to here and we don't have any parent coroutine of this thing so we need to mention our coroutine exception handler inside this now this coroutine ensures that any exception is throwing inside this coroutine will be handled properly let's try to run this code So yeah, you can see it is not throwing any error. It is just printing the exceptions, right? Coroutine exception handled, coroutine exception handled, and what are the throwable part and the other throwable part which we have printed here, okay? So this is how the coroutine exception handling works basically. Now one last important part is remaining here. That is, let's clear it from here. This thing we can keep it as it is because we might need it later. Let's try to create one coroutine scope. Inside this, we can keep our coroutine exception handler and we can launch it. Now, let's try to launch two more child coroutines here, like this. Inside this, we can print a log statement that this is the first child and this is the second child. Inside this, I'm trying to throw the exception. So let's try to throw the exception, first child exception. So this line is basically not reachable. So let's remove it because that will gonna throw the exception in this line itself. Uh, this is fine, all right. Now, we are using coroutine scope what does this mean the purpose of this coroutine scope is if we have multiple api calls here and we want that 
if any single API fails, so let's suppose we are calling the, these are the API calls, okay? I am delaying it uh, by 500 milliseconds and I'm delaying this one by, so this is uh, executing by 700. So we have specified few delay timers here. So now what will happen? This launch will come here. It will wait for 0.5 seconds and it will throw the exception. Although it is handled here properly, okay? This will get printed properly. But we need to see that what will happen to this thing because this is also a API call for us. We are calling an API which is taking 700 milliseconds time. So will this statement get executed or not? Because, because this is throwing exception. As we have discussed that these are the two API calls. First API call is taking 0.5 seconds. Second API call is taking 0.7 seconds. So what we want is if first API is throwing any exception, we want this second child to get executed properly. It should not get hampered with the first exception. And we are using coroutine scope here. So let's see how this will behave. Let's try, try to run this and check the result. Okay, so this coroutine got handled, okay, here. And the exception was first child exception. But can you notice that this second child is not printed? Why? because the behavior of coroutine scope is like that itself. If uh, we'll go inside this coroutine scope and you will read the documentation here, it says that failure of any child, it says from here, failure of any child coroutine in this scope or cancellation of the scope itself cancels all the scope's children, okay? So if anything hampers to any children of this coroutine scope, we'll gonna hamper all other children's as well. So this will not be a good thing if your requirement is to run every API independently. So in that case, what we can use. So there's one scope called as supervisor scope. Now inside the supervisor scope, let's keep these two launches here. Okay. Now inside supervisor scope, we have uh, created our both coroutines inside the supervisor scope. Now let's try to run the same scenario in this supervisor scope. And you can see here that exception got handled properly and second child is also printed. So that's the beauty of supervisor scope. So it also depends upon the requirement, like what kind of requirement you have. If your requirement is like, we need every API calls independently, then this is very good. But if there are few dependencies and you want that if any one API fails, fail the whole coroutine itself, then you can simply go for coroutine scope. And uh, yeah, so this is all about the coroutine exception handling part. I hope you have learned something new in this video. So this completes our coroutine playlist. And yeah, suggestions are always welcome. Please let me know in the comments if you want me to start any special kind of a topic for you guys in Android. So yeah, take care. I'll see you in the next video.